When security is integrated into DevOps, this is sometimes called DevSecOps, and at the highest level means that we will not allow security vulnerabilities to exit the dev process and enter the ops process. Security occurs in multiple places throughout the DevOps cycle. We have security requirements that come from standards. And then we have different kinds of assessment that occur at different points on the DevOps continuum. If we divide these two areas in half and look at the parts that are in the dev process, we see that, not surprisingly, the development and building of the application occurs in this dev phase. And with that comes security requirements and three types of assessment to root out any bugs that remain after we proactively avoid as many as we can. We still have some security to do in the ops process as well. First of all, we need some type of a verification step to make sure that we accomplished our goals in the dev process before we promote the code. We also have to monitor the application throughout its life while it runs in the production environment. Since new vulnerabilities can be introduced or can be discovered after the system has already been promoted. There are several advantages to DevSecOps. Looking at standard application development, code is often copied from project to project, or perhaps one part of a project into another part, maybe from, say, one web page to another web page. And so any uncaught bugs will replicate quickly. If we can catch these earlier and eliminate them, it's much less likely that the bugs will propagate throughout this project or be carried over from one project into another project. Also, fixing security issues is a matter of timing. The later that it's done, the more that it costs to fix the same bug. If we can fix the bugs in the development process, we encounter a lot less friction. We don't have to go through the processes, paperwork, and bureaucracy it takes to fix something that's already made it further down the process. The developer can probably just go ahead and quietly fix the bug, perhaps without any fanfare, and move on with the development process. If the bug escapes into the build process, we start to see the build process itself getting interrupted, and this slows down the project. The developer's reputation might be impacted, and bugs start to replicate. If a bug makes it all the way into the testing unit, then at this point the project timelines are probably going to be disrupted because we'll need to send that bug back to the development phase in order to get patched so that it can eventually work its way back up into testing. And we also have the mean time to repair of the bugs going up quite a bit as the amount of work it takes to fix the bug is getting bigger and bigger in order to send it back in these later phases. If the bug makes it all the way into production, or what some comments call the run phase, then the mean time to repair is going to be at its maximum, as we not only have to pay whatever it costs to fix the bug in the development process, but there's also going to have to be some kind of verification in order to promote that code. And so it not only have to fix the bug, but we also have to get the code tested and approved to move back into the production process. It's also possible that there may be other consequences for uncaught bugs that are running in production. Perhaps a security researcher will discover them and report it as a bug bounty, or a malicious agent might take advantage of the bug, and we could have some sort of security breach. All in all, fixing bugs later is disruptive, and the further the bug gets, the more disruptive it's going to be. Security assessments can be integrated into these processes early on to stop these issues as fast as possible. Also, when integrated into DevOps, we can automate a lot of the security testing 
to reduce the amount of friction it takes to get the security assessments done. So in the development process, we have available to us this sort of automated peer review called static code analysis, where we can have software read the code and find common problems by inspecting the code itself. There is also a type of static analysis that can be done during the build process when we're integrating in third-party libraries. There are inspectors that can keep track of issues with third-party libraries and make sure that the developer is aware of these problems when they're trying to integrate a certain library in with their project and give the developer choices on other versions of the library that have been patched. There are also dynamic vulnerability assessment tools available during testing. These tools interact with the application and so they typically can't be run until the application is fairly well put together because the application has to be available running in order for dynamic vulnerability assessment tools to talk to the application and see what they can learn by interacting with the app. There's also instrumented vulnerability assessment that happens at about this same time. Essentially, there are agents that are running along with the application on the application server. And so as the application is running, these agents can watch what the application is doing with quite a bit of detail. And this could be combined with dynamic vulnerability assessment so that as the scanners are scanning the application, the instrumentation is keeping track of what's happening inside the application. And those two working together can be quite powerful because the dynamic vulnerability assessment can find issues and the instrumentation can point out the root cause of the issue, sometimes even down to the actual line of code. If bugs fail to be caught by one of these processes, they're going to escape to the production process. And at that point, it's too late to fix them. They're already out there. So again, with DevSecOps, timing is everything. A small bug that occurs early on because we miss a security requirement, fail to implement the requirement correctly, or perhaps just don't understand what's expected, will multiply as code is replicated from project to project or from page to page, screen to screen, or other unit over to another unit. And this gets worse as we start to bring in other people's code libraries. As those libraries are integrated, they can also introduce security issues into the project. As these move on to test, we start to integrate the system with other middleware and components. For example, web applications might be paired with web servers, and those other pieces of middleware can start to bring in security problems as well. Maybe they're not configured correctly, or the connections are not secure. So now the bugs continue to multiply. If somehow these bugs are not fixed and they make it into the ops process, the same bugs will be there, but they're going to be much bigger because they're more expensive to fix. There are these lines that occur in DevOps, and there are consequences for crossing those lines. One of the lines is kind of a warning area that happens between planning the project and actually implementing it. On one side of this line, we can proactively prevent vulnerabilities from ever occurring in the first place. We can be careful about how we write the code, the patterns that we use to write the code, and the architecture of the system. And just by following generally accepted programming practices, best practices, and security requirements, we can actually avoid having vulnerabilities in the first place. Once we cross over this first line, and we start to implement the application, we've now entered a reactive remediation area where when a bug is introduced, we'll have to fix it. And so at this point, we're not so much preventing bugs, but we're finding them, identifying, and categorizing them, and fixing them. But there's another line that is even more important. And that's the line between dev and ops. 
On this side of the line, we have our last chance to fix a bug before it gets out into the operations or production area. And if the bug makes it over the line, again, it's too late. It's already out there. We're going to pay maximum price to fix it, have the highest mean time to repair. And also, we are now introducing risk to the organization. So again, timing is a very important concept within DevSecOps. Everything has to be done as early as possible. If we fix items relatively quickly, it shouldn't cost us too much if our DevOps process is fairly efficient. But as these bugs continue to move on down the line, they're going to be more difficult to identify, it takes longer to get them fixed, and there's more steps in order to send back, track, open a ticket, reproduce the bug, and fix the bug. So by the time the bug gets out to where the project is ready to release the code, it's now down to crunch time. The project timelines are very tight at this point, and any kind of disruption is expensive. And naturally, if it makes it on out into production, we're now going to pay the maximum price to fix this issue. We also could be facing some other kinds of consequences, like bug bounties, some sort of security event, or some sort of violation of our compliance obligations. So we can think of dev as having both the start and the finish line in it. Between the start and the finish, we need to identify all of our security challenges. We need to find them as quickly as possible. And above all else, we need to fix them before we reach the end of the dev cycle. We do not want those making it into the ops process. In part two, we'll take a look at what it means to actually do DevOps with security integrated continuously into the process.